ready to love life? Join me on a transformative journey with Tantra. I'm Tara Rose, inviting you to say yes to the present moment. Tantra is more than sex. It's a spiritual path using the body for expansion. In our sessions, we explore bliss and emotional pain, ignite your life force energy, and create a safe space for growth. I guide women, men, and couples, in person or online, blending traditional and neo-tantra. This can be a profound journey to recognize your true self. Book a discovery call at tararose.net, that's T-A-R-A-R-O-S-E, or message on WhatsApp 76 Tantra with Tara Rose. Activate, nourish, and enrich your mind, body, and spirit. Hi, my name is Annika. Do you know that feeling of having intimacy with another or with yourself and just not feeling fulfilled? So the question is, do you really know what you want? Do you know how a yes feels in your body and how a no feels in your body and really from your body and not from a rational headspace? And are you completely aware of how do you want to be touched? And how do you want to touch another? And if you do so, how do you communicate this in a clear and loving way? 
this and other topics I'm covering in my workshops and I look forward to welcoming you there. Find me on Facebook or Insta with my name Annika Lip. A double N I K A L I double P or contact me via WhatsApp O seven nine three five one seven eight six four. The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities they represent or that of the program, its presenters, hosts, directors or other team members. This show is intended for audiences aged 23 and older. 
This production and its digital copies contain content of an adult nature. If you are easily offended or are under the age of 18, this show is not intended for you. The posts, pages and recordings within are intended for adults only and may include descriptions of scenes of sexual content, suggestive opinions, detailed discussions and graphic topics. Listener discretion is advised. Passionate tollies and sultry swingers, it's time for Lola's Lifestyle Lectures on your favorite seduction station, Lust FM, for the lustful listeners. didn't work as it was supposed to. Good evening, last folks. I mean, what is starting a new damn season without a little bit of not pressing the buttons right, right? Welcome to the first episode of season two in Lola's Lifestyle Lectures, your favorite nighttime talk show focused on educating and guiding and helping you navigate swinging and ethical non-monogamy. I'd like to start off by mentioning our associated endorsement site, Zenites. The Zenites website, guys, has combined socials, events, parties, workshops for all walks of life and like-minded individuals. The Zenites, uh, the Zenites website is a quality South African community of unique, fun, uninhibited people who enjoy life to the fucking fullest. They are into casual dating, social networking, open relationships, and alternative lifestyles with an extensive amount of social platforms for us adults to connect on. Zenite makes these fi- makes finding these um, quality connections easy, affordable, and accessible. If you guys want to join the Zenites community, head on over to www.zenites.com and explore countless possibilities. Then, of course, our endorsement site, the CIF. Yes, guys, you know them. Lola's favorite friends at the Council of Fantasy. What always blows my mind, right, is I'm looking at these numbers, and there's 1,900 of you folk like, right, like, listening out there right now. At this very moment, 1,900 listening. Where the hell are you guys, and why aren't you on, why aren't you on the CIF? This is what Lola wants to know. The Council of Fantasy is a lifestyle orientated community. We cater for BDSM lifestyles and everybody that is somewhere in between. If you want to learn more about sex positivity, if you want to connect with Lola, come say hi on the CIF, okay? Hosting these, we host events in all spectrums. Um, we're an inclusive, we're an all inclusive community, and the only shame we shame is shame itself. One of the main focus, focuses of the CIF is education and sex positivity, BDSM, lifestyle, um, anything and everything. I mean, there's even a women's empowerment group. You guys can find us at www.counciloffantasy.co.za or you guys can head on over to Lola's website, La Lust FM. That's www. Yes, it's a double L because we love La Lust, La Lust Fools. www.lalustfm.live. And find the link to the WhatsApp community right at the bottom of the home screen. Just click on that little WhatsApp icon and then come and say hi to us on, on the CIF. Your Lola, 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 I mean, it's a night. Your Lola Blakely production moderators for this evening are Miss Big Red, Miss Azur Inferno, Zane, and we have a slight change in production management this evening and for the season going forward. Congratulations, Medusa. I mean, this production manager has been on my ass all day. Okay, my phone hasn't stopped fucking ringing. My messages haven't stopped pouring in. And Medusa's on my ass. She's medusing the shits out of me today. So she she's our production manager for this season. If you guys see them in the chat, if you um, see them posting a bunch of socials there, they have to keep us um, safe and engaged with our listeners. During the airing, feel free to ask them questions, send them a wife, send them a hello, send them a damn donut. These guys are hungry. Um, now for some, some exciting news. Okay, this is the exciting part of the evening because you guys have possibly already heard like a <coughs> yeah from the side because the two of them are sick. <laughs> for the first half of the season, okay, I mean, Lola loves doing everything in extremes, right? So I'm not, we don't have one co-host. <laughs> for Lola's lifestyle lectureship because we love groupies 
I'm down to <laughs> we're doing the groupy shit, okay? Um, you guys know them, you guys love them. It's Mr. and Mrs. Tusum. I had to beg them for the longest time. Because I had to beg you. No, you didn't. You lie. <laughs> Hi, everybody. James and Debbie um, have joined the production team for the first half of Lifestyle Lectures as the co host So what they're going to be doing is they're going to be doing like swapsies with me for weeks. Mm. So one week's going to be Debbie and Lola. Next week's going to be James and Lola. And we are going to kill the shit out of ethical non-monogamy because we have an exciting season planned for the lot of you. Then after the 10 weeks of swingers, we are going to be doing 10 weeks of pollies. So KB, she's not gone, guys. She's coming back. She will be back. She's not far away. She'll be my co-host for the next, uh, for the following um, 11 to 12 to 20 weeks, where we're going to navigate and explore poly and all of the polycule shit, right? Tonight is episode one of season two, and it's titled Conversation on the Playground. And um, to help us navigate this playground rules, we've got a great guest this evening. But before we even get to the guest, because the guest is still not online, so I'm going to do say if you can maybe just call the guest there and tell her that we're waiting for her in the room. And while we're doing that, I'm going to um, greet our lovely co-hosts and thank them for finally accepting. Yes, there we go. Never mind. Don't call her. She's calling us, and she's in. There we go. But while we're waiting for Debbie and James, guys, welcome. Tonight you guys are doing it together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everybody. Oh, hi, everybody. Nice to be back. Sorry this... if it does sound like you've got frogs in our throats because we're not feeling too well. I mean, they've been sitting here, right, um, Lola Studios at the house. So they've been visiting for a while since like seven ish right? And you can see these two are really sick. <laughs> like, you guys are really sick. You guys really don't feel well. So I want to thank you for coming all this way and still doing the, the show and still doing the airing. It just shows the dedication that we're going to be seeing for the rest of the season. It's our pleasure. Will you know that anything? Oh, you guys make my heart melt. We love it. <laughs> so this evening we said we've got, how are we, uh, 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 Debbie James, how are we feeling about this conversation topic that we've got tonight? It's a very important part of the whole lifestyle. It's one of the most important steps that a couple can yeah. take. Mm. It's it's the it's beginning it of the starts, journey. Yeah. It's that first step. Mm. And um, you guys know that the guest this evening as well, right? Yes, we do. It's okay. And we all love her. We all love her. We missed her last season. Yes. So yeah. this is another one of those secrets that Lola didn't let anybody know up until this live airing right now. We've got our fabulous Dr. M back with the production team as of this, this season. Last season, she was missing in action. She wasn't doing too good, but she's back. And she, listen, guys, she's back with a fucking vengeance. Dr. Marina Besson, or Dr. M as we know her, obtained her PhD from NWU in sociology. Dr. M did her master's in, in medical sociology with a clinical in group dynamics and her bachelorette in forensic psychology. These are just a couple of Dr. M's qualifications because this, listen, if I have to call and I like name out all of her qualifications, we'll be here all night and we won't have a show. Dr. M's PhD was done, was done on ethical non-monogamy and the effect of cons consensual non-monogamy um, on the martial well-being and satisfaction among South African couples. In conjunction to being an intimacy coach, Dr. M is also a Reiki master and she's a life coaching master. Well, she's a life coach. Dr. M is currently employed by UJ as a research associate and that in itself is a massive achievement. Dr. M has also decided to launch a comprehensive intimacy coaching syllabus in the next four weeks, which is approved by the HSCPA, Association for Supportive Counselors and Holistic Practitioners. I mean, Lala's in, 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 um, enrolled, that's what I'm looking for. Lala en enrolled with him, so if I can do it, you guys can do it too. Um, associated Wellness, is the, the um, levels consist of Associated Wellness Intimacy Coach, Wellness Intimacy Coach, and a Specialist Wellness Intimacy Coach. So let's see all, all of you guys on level three and see if we can beat Lola at them. Without further ado, let's say hello to this evening's fabulous guest, Dr. M. Thank you for joining us again, and we welcome you with open arms back to the season. Hello, Lola. Hello, Debbie and James. Very sorry to hear Dr. Dr. M. Feeling so great. Sending you lots of Reiki energy. Oh, 
Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Thank you. They're not feeling too well, I must say. They've really been soldiers. So, like I said earlier, this is obviously an indication of the dedication. <laughs> we we want a dedicated team. We wouldn't miss this. <laughs> so, 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 Dr. M, this evening's um, conversation, this evening we're having a conversation on about conversations, right? Um, tell us how important or why, why do we start an ethical non-monogamy not non-monogamous relationship with conversations. Where where do we start? What do we do? Let's let's hear from Dr. M. Let her do the coaching. Okay. Well, James pretty pretty much nailed it when he said that it's the most important yes. conversation <laughs> <laughs> that you need to have with your partner. So for me, as a practicing coach, when couples come to me and ask um, or tell me that they want to engage in consensual non-monogamy, I really open my ears to what they're saying. And the first question that I like to ask is, why? Why do you want to go into consensual non-monogamy? And I just want to make it clear to all the listeners, I am not against consensual non-monogamy. I'm not promoting consensual non-monogamy. As a coach, I play devil's advocate. I look at it from all sides and make sure that the couple is a good fit for the lifestyle that they are wanting to enter. Okay, and tonight this happens to be the side of consensual non-monogamy that people don't look into because they see all the bells and whistles and nice things and they don't always consider the alternative side. So asking people, why do you want why? The couple must be honest. Is it because I don't love my partner anymore? Well, that's a red flag to start off with. Is it because I'm bored? then I need to ask the question, is there anything that you can do to change the boredom? Have you tried other possibilities? Because remember, consensual non-monogamy is not for everybody. And people have misconceptions about what it can do for your marriage and for your no, relationship. I <clears throat> okay. completely agree. We've, we've heard it many times before in the lifestyle from couples who when we approach them about how they got into the lifestyle or why they in the lifestyle, um, the, the word boredom creeps in, in quite a bit of those conversations. Yeah. And, and we, we want excitement. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a red flag for us if that's uh, the opening line that a couple has that's um, curious about the lifestyle. And Dr. M, what? Yes. You, were, you were mentioning, have you tried anything else to, you know, create excitement what type of things can couples do other than just going into the lifestyle well then we first got to start looking into are they happy in their own skin and in their own body and then we can ask questions like have you tried bringing in toys have you tried bringing in kink have you tried doing sexy photographs in the bedroom? Have you tried something that will rekindle the intimacy between you and the excitement for the sexual act? Because most people are damn right lazy. They go, they plonk on the bed, <laughs> they look like starfish, and they go, and I, I good swap, your coffee in two keys. Um, well, of course, you're going to be bored. Quite frankly, I'm surprised that they don't snore on the job. <laughs> and also, if you, if you can't have excitement between you and your partner, what's the use of going into the lifestyle? Because you're going to be just as not excite, exciting exactly. for other people. Exactly, exactly. And the, the minute I hear the word, we want excitement or spice, I, I still have to ask the question, how do you feel about your partner? And does your partner still turn you on? Are you using the term, um, I need excitement as a crutch to be or not to be honest with your partner about you know you don't turn me on anymore you don't shave your beard you've got prickly things on your face or you don't clean your nails or you you know there, there's always something and that's why discourse is very crutch, important crutch voice, crutch, yeah. <laughs> the crutch yeah well, and so that we have to ask these questions and couples don't do that because it's easy not to 
um, address the elephant in the room and let's just go and make a zoo somewhere else. And the problem is that these people that get into consensual non-monogamy for the wrong reasons are the ones that create drama for practicing yes. um, non-monogamous people. Correct. And yeah. they, yeah. they bring all sorts of havoc into the mix. Yeah. And it's not you're messy. not in love with your partner, you shouldn't be doing this. Mm. We've, no. we've often said to, we've said to many couples that we've spoken to that we're, that we're curious that you need to have a very solid foundation in your own relationship before you try the lifestyle. If there's if there's any cracks in your in your relationship, those cracks will only be tested by the lifestyle. They'll never get fixed by the lifestyle. It makes it so much worse, right? Huh? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's like it's, it's like people trying to they decide let's have a baby because you know our, our marriage is not. Right. Listen, yeah, it's, it makes it's, it so much worse. It doesn't fix it. It, it, doesn't, it, it makes it. It makes it worse. And I've I've had a lot of conversations with couples over the past couple of, uh, um, and there's, there's actually one specific couple, um, that I had this conversation with about having conversations. It wanted to go into ethical non-monogamy. They 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 want to become swingers. They want to swing, and I, they asked me a question. I was like, but hold on, haven't you guys discussed this amongst the two of you? Why are you asking me? Okay, I can't answer this for you. Have you asked your partner? Like the, these these conversations, you, you need to find out um, where you are in your partnership and what, like like Doctor M saying wh why you want to be doing this in the first place before even considering being a swinger. A lot of these people just just want to swing to get their dick wet or, or you know whatever the alternative to that is. Or the opposite to that is, but they're not considering the fact that you're going to hurt yourself, you're going to hurt your partner, you're going to end up losing whatever you guys have because you haven't been conversating. You and haven't been doing the most basic of human things and, and that's having a conversation. But possibly destroying... Sorry. Sorry, Dr. Carry on. Are possibly destroying someone else's relationship because you bring your own... No, that's... that's not in. In. That lifestyle should be drama free. I don't yeah. want. I, I yeah. don't even dra want drama in my my mm -hmm. life. I don't want other people's drama in my life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. But you see, that's why going to a coach is so important. A coach that specializes in the field of consensual non-monogamy. Because these people are trained to assess whether the couple is ready and a good fit for a lifestyle, whether you want consensual non-monogamy, whether you want kink, whether you want poly, doesn't matter. A coach is trained to understand the keywords, the discourse, to analyze the discourse and understand, mm. wait, hold on, this what these people are saying is not a good fit. So let's take it a step back again and start understanding. Maybe it's a relationship problem. Maybe it's a image problem. Maybe it's an ego mm. problem. You know, Women in particular, when they start hitting the age of 40, 45, all sorts of imbalances happen in their brains and in their bodies and everything. So is the woman doing this to still prove her own sexual prowess? And if mm. she is, what is she going to do to the wife of the partner she's going to pick? Is she mm. going to destroy her because she's acting all a wonder woman there? Do, do, do you understand? Yes. And, and these, the, these are the conversations that need to be done and not only between the couple, they need to be mediated. Um, someone with an understanding of the lifestyle and an understanding of um, human sexual behavior must be there to say, hold on, listen to what you're saying. You want to do this because you still want to prove you wonder woman. Why? Why do you want to prove mm -hmm. it to or with somebody else? Why aren't you proving it to your own partner? Why don't you ride him like a bronco? Why do you want to go around <laughs> to the like a bronco? Do you, do you understand? It's, yeah, the couple needs to have fully explored themselves first, totally and wholly, yes. before they want to explore somebody else. Mm. Yes. I think that, that's something that a lot of people are not doing, right? And and this also, it's not just about exploring your partner, but exploring yourself as well. Yes. So yes. I think before people even consider having a conversation, like before we even have, have conversations, have you really conversated with yourself? Yeah. 
Have yes. you explored yourself and your wants and your dreams and your aspirations and, and your where fantasies. you your fantasies and where you are you are in your relationship before even asking where your partner is in, in your relationship or before even exploring your partner's your, your partner's fantasies? Yeah. How, yes. like, are we even considering these things? Yes. Uh, but you see, again, that is the problem because people become complacent in their relationships. They, you know, mm. I know when I get home at five o'clock, wifey would have cooked, the food will be on the table, we're going to have a discussion about the kids' school, da 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 da. We're going to get into the bath, we're going to get into bed. And there's nothing. Um, they themselves are no longer living authentic, authentically in their own passion. They, they have and, and you forgot about we either watch TV or we on our phones. Yes. Chatting to other people instead of chatting to each other. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why that beginning conversation of why do you want to engage in consensual non-monogamy, that is the most important question you will ever be able to ask anybody. And based on what they say from that, you can gauge whether a couple is a, a good fit for consensual non-monogamy. But mm -hmm. then, then we can take it a step further. So let's just assume we've done the due diligence and the couple is a potential fit for consensual non-monogamy. That still doesn't mean that they must just go to a club and jump into it. No, of course. Then we have to start asking the next set or the next level of questions. So are we going to engage in consensual non-monogamy and are we going to allow things such as bisexuality i mean mm. come on i did research and i know how the majority of people think regarding bisexuality and same sex so that is so let's amazing. Hear it because i don't know um for the most part heterosexual men are very um anti-bisexual mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yes. yes so bisexuality and I can't quite prove whether it is because they want to maintain the machoism or whether um, and, and they secretly would like to have a bisexual experience that that was raised in my research or whether it just is I'm hetero and nothing and nobody is going to change my mind. And then we get the converse to that, which is the ladies who are going, oh, I think I need to become a swinger because I want to experience another woman. And that's something that you will never be able to experience in a heterosexual relationship. Um, mm. the, the, the logistical dynamics don't make sense. No, So that's one of the first questions. So now we're starting to understand, okay, so the spice and the variety that they're asking for is to experience something bisexual. So maybe she's bi-curious, maybe there's something else going on there. Then the next question, and, and also very imperative, is your level of jealousy. How are you going to react the first time you see your partner with somebody else? And Absolutely. you must say, ooh, sexy, because then, then I'm telling you straight off the cuff, don't go there. <laughs> don't go there, because you haven't considered what you're talking about. Yes. You know? <laughs> Think about the impact. Here is a heterosexual monogamous couple, probably in their 40s, because most swingers start engaging in consensual non-monogamy from the age of 40 plus. And this is worldwide. This we, We've established that worldwide in various researches. So now you've got a couple that's been together for almost 20 years or so, maybe a bit longer if they were um, school sweethearts. And now for the first time, they are going to watch each other with somebody else. Hey, what is that Without going to Without knowing how they're going to feel about it, yes. Exactly. Have they even considered, have they taking a step back and saying, listen, if I see my husband kissing another woman, I think I'm going to cut his head off with a samurai sword. I mean, <laughs> bloody hell. It, it, it goes a little deeper than that as well, Dr. M. It's, it's happened um, from my experience anyway, that the, the couples have had that, that discussion and they have spoken about it and they've, they've come to terms with the feelings that they believe that they may they have. They think they might be okay and with it. Yeah. they have that first encounter, and the encounter's nice for both of them, and they want a second encounter, which goes well, and then they have a third encounter, and they meet a, a completely different couple where, let's just say, the husband of the other couple is extremely talented, and the wife has more orgasms and screams louder than she's ever screamed in their 20 years of marriage. 
And that brings about a whole different set of feelings for the husband. And, and we've encountered that before in the lifestyle and, and a couple that we've spoken to um, confided in us just how awkward it felt for them. And it almost drew them out of the lifestyle having been in for already for like eight to nine months. So there's a lot of different conversations that need to happen before you explore. Mm. Yes, but that's one of the questions that I've got here that we, we need to talk about is how do you navigate if one partner is uncomfortable um, in in the couple or the, the duo that you're engaging with? Do you not engage with a couple? Do you say, okay, well, I'll engage with the man or the woman and you can go find somebody else? Do you have a safe word? Do, do they even know how to deal with those emotions? And um, did they discuss beforehand what level of, um, how do you say, comfort for both of them during that encounter? Because that's what's happening. Yes, that's that's what's happening. So now you, you're experiencing all these feelings and sensations during the throes of passion with your partner and your your or with your swing partner and your partner got this suck out the balls and it's like holy hell what are we going to do here did they did they speak to each other to say listen if i raise my pinky toe it means i'm uncomfortable i need you to yes. please be comfortable yes. let's have the session always now. have a safe phrase mm, yes yeah. But they don't. They go in there going, oh, stars and stripes and bangles and bells and I don't know what. And we're just going to have this amazing sex. And then they come out of it disturbed and the relationship challenged because I don't know how to deal with these emotions. Yes. I think what people need to realize also is um, we aren't always just going to have one conversation. Right? Conversations yeah. are going to be reoccurring. It, it, it has to be. Communicate, conversate continuously. Communicate, yes. conversate continuously. Communicate, conversate continuously. And why do we do this? Because you got to set up your framework. you got to navigate your own your own negotiation. And you got to set up your own contract. So these are kink terms that we're now seeing that needs to come into, into ethical non-monogamy. But it, the swingers just call it something else. They call it, what is our rules? You know, yeah, the limits. Limits. what are our limits in the last house? So it's, it's the same thing. We just call it something else. And these conversations need to continuously happen. Now you've had, like, like you guys are saying, you guys have had like this experience. People are not happy. Let's renegotiate. Yeah. Let's renegotiate our terms. Let's conversate about it again. And let's bring this up again. Yeah, and also talk about it. And when one is upset and the other one had a good experience, you have to talk about it. Honestly, honestly, talk about it. What is this thing, um, uh, Doctor M? What did you say when we spoke? Was it last night or the night before? Where you said uh, there, there's a certain phrase when you used when you said like a hundred percent honesty. What was what was it? Um, yes, you have to be authentic. You have to be one hundred percent authentic. Yes. Authentic. Yes. Yes. But you know what the problem also is: couples don't debrief properly. They, they don't. Debriefing there. Yes, they don't after the experience come together and say you know what lovey i really enjoyed this person i was with tonight because he sucked my toes for instance and it's something you never do maybe we can explore mm. that they, they don't debrief or the the they don't say what they enjoyed and what they didn't enjoy they would rather keep quiet for fear of what the other person may say or how the partner may react and they is a red flag because mm -hmm. if you are having these experiences with third parties and you are not able to debrief honestly openly and candidly then you're already going to start keeping secrets from each other and then you're already looking for don't, don't laugh dr m when debbie and i started out on this adventure we used to keep a little black book <laughs> and we used to write down the details <laughs> of every <encounter. laughs> That's so cute. There was, I, I, I should you know, there was scores out of 10 for technique of this technique. No. How they, how they made us feel. No. Yeah. We, we often Listen, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we had the for about, about a year and, and then we it became. It just became the admin. 
<laughs> well, I mean, these things are swang, apparently. But, but, <laughs> the, point I'm, the point I'm trying to, trying to make by, by raising that is that we would, we would analyze each play date and talk about our feelings, what Debbie yeah. felt good about, what she didn't enjoy, what she wanted more of, what she wanted less of, um, awesome. anything that I may have done during the, the encounter that made her feel slightly um, off-centered or, or maybe not uh, having been attended to by me or by the other husband perfectly. From the outset, I only ever wanted every experience that we that we went into to be perfect for both of us and for our relationship. So we would dissect every single, excuse me, every single encounter just to make sure that we learned from, from anything that wasn't perfect. Awesome. Awesome. You know what? I want to read that book, sorry. <laughs> so do we, so do we. No, 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 you can't it. read that. Oh, <laughs> listen, that's terrible. They wanted such a loss for the life of Lila. <laughs> no, I don't amazing. read, but I would have fucking read that. <laughs> No, man, that's amazing. I think that's awesome. That's It's a, a beautiful way to understand the process, the experience, the, the encounter, and what it brings for you and into your relationship. I enjoyed this. I didn't enjoy that. I would like us to try this. So it, it's a dynamic that also includes learning and understanding and intimacy because you've got to talk and communicate i mean at that, the end of the day the, the, the whole point of, of entering into the lifestyle is to enhance and grow and strengthen your own relationship that's how we see it at least for you know what um for couples that are a good fit for consensual non-monogamy absolutely there are many many benefits so my research showed that there they are tremendous benefits to consensual non-monogamy but for couples that are not a good fit consensual non-monogamy can have the absolute opposite effect it can destroy a relationship yeah yes absolutely. another thing that couples don't do and what they don't discuss is how many people are they willing to engage with and how often Ooh, are they going to engage with these people? Because now we find, and my research clearly showed that, in Europe, couples tend to have, um, uh, one of the people that I interviewed had a phrase, shag and release. So I shag, <laughs> I don't know your name, I don't know your history, uh, that's it, That we, we're done with. And that seems to be the trend in Europe. South Africa has a very interesting dynamic, and I'm not sure whether it's the Africana culture. I, I don't know at this point. But um, South African swingers tend to become house friends. So we shag. It's we the don't Brian Swipe. Exactly. Brian Swipe. Brian Swipe, no, that's what it is. So now... <laughs> You must remember now we are mixing um, the the consensual non-monogamy swinging ethos with a polyamorous twist. And where do you draw the line? How does the couple feel about that? Because now you're not only engaging in sex with a third party, that third party is becoming part of your household. Yeah, there's emotion attached to it now. Mm. Big time. I mean, now we're bringing poly, the poly people into the swingers. We, we can't be doing this shit. We, but we, the swingers just, say they're not poly, no? Remember that. Yeah, no. Yeah, so that's what I meant. Yeah. To be clear, from, from our side, to simple fun, we, we subscribe to the shag and release. Uh, yeah. We, we, we don't want to come to your house for a house bry every second weekend. Mm -hmm. We don't want to chat to you every day on the phone. We don't want to ask you in the morning, how did you sleep? Uh, or how was your day at the end of the day? What are you cooking? For us, it also takes the excitement out of it because we have each other. We have, you know, we have conversations with each other. Um, we don't want to have this vanilla type friendship conversations with other people every day. Mm. Um, it takes the excitement out of it for us. So, yeah, we don't do the bry and... Brian's you are our best friends mm. thing. Yeah. Yeah, we find if we start developing things. if we start developing um friendship feelings towards a couple, it, it does start to blur the 
bonds of fuckability. Yeah, yeah we we have in fact um, become become friends with people, and then there's no more swinging. Mm. You you either are friends, mm. or you are a swinging couple that we mm. meet up with. Mm. So yeah. my, my research showed that as well, that in some instances, um, swingers that have become friends that have crossed the social boundaries, um, that the swinging diminishes. But in other instances as well, the swing, the, the, there's no distinction between the swinging and the friends. There's going to weddings, it's going to brides, it's going to children's christenings, or it, it, it's just a big mush. And then you have to ask yourself the question before you engage in this, how are you going to deal with this? How are you going to deal with the third parties in your home? And as part of your social circle, uh, where where do you start drawing the distinctions? And couples don't do that. And when they find themselves in the situation of, hold on, we are now actually lakkerkeier buddies, and now we're also going to be swingers. How do you deal with that? Where, where do they start drawing the distinction? And couples I, don't ask those questions. I think geography also has a lot to do with it, and not the, the school subject, but the actual geography and location of where the couples found themselves. Um, mm. Couples that we've spoken to that are in smaller communities where the prevalence of swinging is, is far less um, statistically than in the big cities. If they do find a couple that they that they enjoy, um, you know, they, they get on, the aesthetics are there, the chemistry is there, then they do be, they do form a close a closer bond than the majority of the couples that we've spoken to that are in the bigger cities only because it's difficult to find um, people that you're comfortable with and people that you can swing with. So and they do end that. up becoming friends. Mm -hmm. And I think that that could be a um, something to explore as a subject all on its own because the rules are different in a small town. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very secretive and you're so, so, so um, scared Paranoid. that somebody else is going to find out about it. So when you do find a swinging couple that you like, who's also as paranoid as you are, you <laughs> yes. hang on to them. And that's it. That's just my take. Uh, obviously, the research you, could be done on it. You're completely correct. It is in the smaller towns. And also because the smaller towns, they are scared of the Skinner backer. So they do tend to be more discreet, even in their social interactions. They, they, they don't tend to be as... Um, open as what the biggest city social interactions will be where people are just more free to talk they they mm. are they do reserve themselves because of the stigma that's attached to consensual non-monogamy so the other thing that um, couples also don't talk about before they engage in consensual non-monogamy is are we allowing singles into this dynamic mm. because that comes with its own set of problems so 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 here's the thing right we're going to go to a short commercial break before we continue on what problems singles and couples in a swingers relationship bring let's go to a short commercial break and then when we come back we can hear more about dr m's amazing informative lesson on how to uh, navigate Conversate, negotiate, all of these lack of things. Masturbate. Yours. Masturbate. No, mm -hmm. we're not doing masturbation now. <laughs> That's on Lola's lessons. Sorry. Tune in for that one. <laughs> You've been robbed. Listen, your name is Carmen. Ellie will have your neck if you steal a steal steal a um episode. Hmm. <laughs> Last the listen. Will she, will she spank me? <laughs> <laughs> listen, she could she could keep a key for you too. <laughs> Comments gonna kill me. <laughs> we, we love you guys. Let's go to a short commercial break. Um, give us about 10 minutes and we'll be back shortly. You know.
Ready to love life? Join me on a transformative journey with Tantra. I'm Tara Rose, inviting you to say yes to the present moment. Tantra is more than sex. It's a spiritual path using the body for expansion. In our sessions, we explore bliss and emotional pain, ignite your life force energy, and create a safe space for growth. I guide women, men, and couples, in person or online, blending traditional and neo-tantra. This can be a profound journey to recognize your true self. Book a discovery call at tararose.net, that's T-A-R-A-R-O-S-E, or message on WhatsApp 76 Tantra with Tara Rose. Activate, nourish, and enrich your mind, body, and spirit. Hi, my name is Annika. Do you know that feeling of having intimacy with another or with yourself and just not feeling fulfilled? So the question is, do you really know what you want? Do you know how a yes feels in your body and how a no feels in your body and really from your body and not from a rational headspace? And are you completely aware of how do you want to be touched? And how do you want to touch another? And if you do so, how do you communicate this in a clear and loving way? 
this and other topics I'm covering in my workshops and I look forward to welcoming you there. Find me on Facebook or Insta with my name Annika Lip. A double N I K A L I double P or contact me via WhatsApp O seven nine three five one seven eight six four. And yes, we are back. I hope you guys all didn't refill your drinks. Let's not be drinking on a Wednesday night. I know it's public holiday, but let's not be drinking on a Wednesday night because tomorrow's work, plus all listeners. I'm so sorry to like break it to you, but if you guys had a lovely day, like off day today, tomorrow's back to school, back to reality, and now it's back to the show. 
So we went on a slight commercial break. I mean, Lola had to tinkle and um, Mr. James had to cough. Miss Debbie had to like wipe her nose because these two are sick and they're going to make me sick, but it's okay. We love him still. We are joined on air this evening with um, the esteemed and there's not, like, there's not enough beschreiving the norm worden. Not really afraid to beschreiven me with the amazing Dr. M. Dr. M obtained her PhD from NU in sociology. She did her master's in medical sociology. With a, clinic, uh, with, with a clinical in group dynamics and her bachelor's in forensic psychology. These are just a couple of Dr. M, uh, M's qualifications, right? Dr. M's PhD, the PhD was done on ethical non-monogamy and the effects of consensual non-monogamy on the um, martial well-being um, and satisfaction among South African couples. In conjunction, in conjunction to being an intimacy coach, Dr. M is also a Reiki master and a life coach. Dr. M is currently employed by UJ as a research associate. She's launching a comprehensive intimacy coaching syllabus in the next four weeks. And there's already subscribed there. So, I mean, you guys can, can come and join us too. Come learn how to be an intimacy coach if that's up your alley. Um, which is a pre this, this whole uh, coaching. Um, uh, syllabus is approved by the HSCPA. The HSCPA is the Association for Supportive Counselors and Holistic Practitioners um, with the following designations. Associated Wellness Intimacy Coach, Wellness Intimacy Coach, and a, special, a Specialist Wellness Intimacy Coach. So you guys can actually come and, and get certified with us. While we were on production break, Miss Carmen Ellie, I love when this woman is online. She just makes my knees weak. So does Medusa, but we both know that they already like wife it up. So don't go search them on socials. They belong to me. Miss um, <laughs> Carmen Ellie asked Dr. M, she wants to know, um, I would like to know how many single women have successful long-term relationships with couples. So how many unicorns? Have successful long-term relationships. This is actually a very interesting question. And I also want to know this shit. How many listen to this woman like being so interested in swingers? Listen, madam, you aren't a swinger. Also, I'm watching you. <laughs> Dr. M Ms. Common wants to know how many unicorns have successful relationships um with couples in this in this um lifestyle. I haven't seen statistics on it, but I can tell you from my research and my research participants. So it does happen that they do have good relationships with the couples that they get into. But invariably, we find that these relationships do dwindle at some point. And the same goes for the bulls. It goes on at on a high for three or four or five years and then at some point it dwindles either because the unicorn or bull finds somebody else or the couple move into a different life phase or they move away or something invariably happens so they don't always live happily ever after um i haven't seen statistics by the way and I've actually researched quite a bit on this. I haven't seen statistics, but invariably when singles are involved with couples, there is a, a ebb and a flow, and we find that it works for a period of time and then it diminishes. Unless yeah, like they most, do poly. Like most, most things, there's an expiration date. Yeah. Mm. We, 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 had, we, we had a, a very, very good relationship with the unicorn for two years. Yeah. And it worked well. It was a it was a lovely yeah. um, symbiotic relationship that the three of us had, and it just ran its course eventually. Um, and we were grateful for her time, and she was for ours. And we parted ways, and you know, we will never forget. But the, you know, the expiration date came, and it went. Yes, my research. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think um I don't think a single woman in the lifestyle. This is just my personal opinion, and I'm no expert on the matter, right? But I don't think a single woman in the lifestyle should be searching for a couple to have a long term relationship with. Um, if it's just sex you're after, like it, I don't think it's a good idea to have just that. Well, that's like, no, again, you, it's you just... need to think of it from a safety perspective. I think mm. a lot of the single single females that we've spoken to safety anyway, and comfort yeah they mm. feel more comfortable knowing 
that um, they don't want a relationship. They might be, excuse me, pursuing their career. Um, they might be studying. They might not have the amount of time on their hands to, to nurse a relationship the way that a relationship needs to be nursed if you want to have a healthy and fulfilling sex life. Mm. So for them, it's a shortcut way to an orgasm. It's a, a shortcut method to get the jollies that you need every other week or every other month without the complication. Mm. You send a message to the couple to say, I'm horny, what are you guys doing tomorrow? And there's no expectations, there's no feelings about it. It's it's a sexual act. And that's it. Once everyone's had their jollies, everyone goes their separate ways. And there's no remorse, there's no guilt. It's just clean cut. It's it mm. works for everybody. Yes, but that is what your single is there for. They they are actually the toy to the couple. And in mm. return, they get, as you've termed it, their jollies. Mm. But I mean, it needs to be a symbiotic relationship. It obviously can't be one-sided. Um, no, no, no. The single, the single needs to get what they need out of the, the fulfillment that they need out of the, the, the contract. Quite yes. Quite. Yes, they do. That's why, you know, when everyone is in um, or on the same page and on the same um, experiential um, level, so everyone will be enjoying it. But you're completely correct in saying that once she's had her jollies, she's off. And they, the couple, have had their jolly with her, whatever it is, whether it's a, a bisexual encounter, a threesome, whatever it is that they're doing. And then it's done with. And she can continue with her life and they can then just re-engage when they're ready. Yeah, the, the, the feeling that we got with the unicorns that we've engaged with over the years is they just don't have the time to commit to a relationship and there's a safety factor on going out mm -hmm. on so many blind dates with guys mm -hmm. where really all you want is your sexual needs taken care of and mm -hmm. you know you know it's it's, it's just a matter a of matter of convenience absolutely <laughs> you've got the, you know, it's on now now it's off now there we go it's good, it's good. <laughs> there definitely is a space for singles but it's also up, you know, my research, my research showed that people labeled the singles as troublemakers. And I have That's to That's what I've heard to you. Okay, but I have to beg the question here. So if, if you're blaming the single, it takes two to tango. So That's what are you doing great. to do or to promote the the dissatisfaction in it are you crossing your own rules and your own boundaries by getting too emotionally attached to the single person have you lost focus of what the point was in getting a single person into the relationship in the it, it, yeah it is a two-way street it's easier to cross lines with a single person because there is no one governing them there's not a wife or a husband holding the reins and going uh-uh no 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 mm. come back a little bit take a step back so it is easier and maybe that is why they are perceived as troublesome but it really does take two to tango and this is why i ask the question um are you going to allow singles into the relationship and what are the dynamics governing that who is going to be the brake pad when one partner sees that the other partner is becoming too attached, too committed to the single, and how are they going to react when the single finds the next couple that they play with, or maybe even um, develops a relationship of their own outside of this relationship, a, a committed relationship where they find their own partner? How are you going to deal with that? Yeah, I think the saying is familiarity breeds contempt. And mm. we've heard from some of the unicorns that they've had absolutely amazing encounters with a couple and mm. the relationship has gone on for five, six, seven months. And then the couple has turned around and said to them, well, you exclusively ours now. We don't want you seeing any single guys or any other couples. And that's their exit, uh, their exit flag. They, they, they get scared off when, when couples start to try and renegotiate halfway through a contract. Mm. Does that happen? It does. Mm. Mm. it does. And also it happens where the, the single person um, decides that 
you know, she's developing feelings for, you know, either the husband or the wife mm -hmm. in, in this relationship. And that, um, you know, that, that means that it has to end. Mm -hmm. Because yes. that's not what the couple is in the lifestyle for. They mm -hmm. don't want emotions involved. Mm -hmm. no, no drama. Yeah. But you see, that is why couples, before they enter consensual non-monogamy, need to ask these questions. They need to be sure how they're going to deal it because it's very easy and to have the conversation and say, okay, if we get to, if one of us gets too attached to the single, then we're just going to call it. No, emotions don't work that way. Who is going to be the break? on that thing and, and this is what couples don't discuss and they don't discuss what the um breaking point is so th this this is not negotiable in our deal they, they don't do that. The, they don't set the boundaries i think a lot of the time as well because um the unicorn is is aptly named because so hard to find and difficult to to track down when a couple does um find a single lady that um, ticks all the boxes for them in terms of um, character and aesthetics and all the rest of it. They want to hold on to that person for love or money because they've looked for so long to find somebody that ticked all those boxes. They end up smothering them. And I think that's that's a lot of the problems that we've heard from unicorns where couples fall down as, as they, they get too overbearing and a little bit too smothering. Yeah. Yeah. And again, but where do you draw that line though? Yeah, they, they have to, to set, the, set the, the ground mm -hmm. the ground rules right at the beginning. The couple needs to agree, and there needs to be three ways communication. The contract needs to be sound, uh, and obviously not a formal contract unless you that way inclined. But you, everybody needs to be in agreement with what the outcome is. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the the whole act of swinging is outcomes based. So whatever the outcome is that you want, everybody agrees. And when some one party starts deviating, it's time to either yes. pull out or renegotiate. Yeah. So, so, so with James and me, um, so, so, I mean, we've got we've got rules in place that that um, safeguard. safeguards our relationship. So, for instance, we've got um, we've got an extra phone that we call our naughty phone. And all communication happens on there. So we don't give up give out our private numbers. So every single chat that happens happens on that phone. We both have access to it. And whether it's a couple, whether it's a single, they don't have access to one of us only. Mm. And that is our way of safeguarding Safety our relationship. Yeah. So if somebody wants to cross that line, you know. It's goodbye. And that um, was part of the contract that we negotiated very early on in our adventure. Yeah. So we we were fortunate to have been guided into the lifestyle by a mentor couple who had been doing it for many years and they were very candid with us and very open about their experiences, both positive and negative. And rather than just dismiss the negative experiences as um, a horror story, we actually took it to heart to say, Shit, what can we do to make sure something like that doesn't happen to yeah, us? Yeah, let's learn from their mistakes. And and we've applied that and it's worked well for us. But you mm. see, we, now we're getting back to where, where this whole conversation originated, is to seek um, a coach to guide you through this and not look at everything through rose-colored glasses and just see all the sex and orgasms, but it's also to go back to the fundamentals of the... Um, groundworks for the couple, their ability Correct. to communicate, yeah. their ability to be emotionally mature in the relationship and to say, this is my line. This is where we may not cross. So if we're going to enter consensual non-monogamy, which is what you did, you you had a mentor, You they, they gave you the information and you could make informed decisions. But for many yes. couples, and I see it in my practice, they don't make informed decisions decisions they're too scared to broach these questions they're too scared to ask the question because they fear what their partner's reaction will be and that in itself is a red flag for me a million times over then I'm like okay but what's going on here you know who's is there coercion or, or whatever the case may be also so what we've what we've what we found is 
um, that very initial conversation is always the hardest one. Somebody yeah. has to raise it. They have to raise the topic. Um, yes. And nine times out of ten, it's the, it's the husband. So yes. getting getting an affirmative reply to a very difficult question is a huge win psychologically. I mean, the, the, the gentleman would have been stewing over this question in some instances for years, waiting for the right moment or opportunity to present it to his his um, his beautiful wife that he he wants to see her with another man or he wants to experience another woman with her or a couple or whatever it, whatever it is. And when she agrees, um, he's he's so grateful and so worried that now trying to um, bring rules and regulations into it is going to have her rethink that he's just so happy to just go. Yeah, he just head wants to get it going. Into, head first <laughs> into the experience. Like, let's get this done. Now. Oh, I've, the end. I've, got, get I've got the green tech. Let's go. Mm. And it's 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 difficult to to put the brakes on and say right. So we we in agreement. Yeah, let's. Let's workshop uh, a course of action. Let's set up a framework that's going to work for us as a couple. How is it going to build our relationship? What are the potential pitfalls? How are we going to negotiate them? And that's a very a very important conversation that needs to happen. And who can we ask for advice? Yeah. Exactly. Which podcast can we listen to? <laughs> exactly. Exactly that. Asking for help. I, I cannot stress that enough. I can go nuts when cu couples come into my practice and I can clearly see there's been no communication, no discussion. It was an absolute hot or cop decision. And then <laughs> with, with drama, they, they're sitting with drama. Mm. It's trauma that they instill upon themselves. Okay, let's move on to another question that couples need to talk about. And this one is such a... a, a controversial question do we play with condoms on it's one thing to be monogamous and not use contraceptive um, such as condoms with your partner but how and and couples don't talk about it and then when something happens then it's like but you didn't use a condom so now you're never coming near me again but hold on did you discuss mm. it did you say how you wanted it to be done or mm. not done and it's also important in terms of hygiene and if you're going to shag and release do you at least know the couple or do you have enough understanding of the couple to know mm. whether you are opening yourself up to anything that may not be that pleasant in the long term look this is very controversial right because i can already like, like i can see a bunch of people going oh, i'm so sick and tired of everybody saying you have to use condom you have to use condom listen you have to use a condom okay let lola tell you you, you got to use a condom but there are people that are just like not that way inclined i don't I, some people are maybe just fucking our ladies i don't know so this is you were right in saying that this is very con it is very controversial i can see the socials blowing up tomorrow it's not it's not just the controversy there's a lot of there's a lot of aspects to um condom use in in the lifestyle so mm -hmm. um some some ladies don't like the feel of it some guys don't like the feel of it some, some guys can't stay hard if they have got a condom on it and then there's mm -hmm. there's health issues like allergies so there's ways to mitigate the risk but it's never going to completely eradicate the risk. I mean, mm. let's be 100% honest, Jan. Even a condom isn't 100% safe. Mm. There, you can still contract something even if you are protected. And a lot of couples mitigate that risk by doing comprehensive tests prior to play, which in their minds um, mitigates the risk. If yes. they've done their due diligence and the um, test kits that they use are exemplary and it's one of the types that um has a hundred percent success rate in determining whether the person is is um healthy or not then yeah that that's the risk that they that they live with yes. yeah because for we, us it's it's absolutely safety first there is no question about whether you will be allowed or not if, if there's no condom mm. there's no play but you see you've there are couples that, that 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 um that they feel like you know their circle of friends are close close and they all play without condoms but for me there's always a risk factor of you don't know who else they might be playing mm. with so yeah um it's a decision that nobody can make for you 
um, but it is a, a discussion that needs to happen. We've we've known a lot of swingers in our time, and a lot of those swinging couples have broken up, and it's turned out that there's been infidelity in the relationship. So if that couple happened to be in a very closely knit circle of four couples, and one of those four couples, uh, one partner of that that couple, um, was cheating. He's not exactly going to tell his wife, let alone the whole group. So yeah, mm. he's he's inadvertently or in, or purposely um, risking everybody's everybody, health. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, you you do you put your your you put your 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 health in the hands of strangers. Yeah, is the, is, is the is few the hours of pleasure worth mm. the risk of of you know yeah, a lifetime of risk and reward mm. of misery? But did you, but did you discuss it? Mm -hmm. Did you discuss it? Exactly. Those are the questions. And it comes back to the other question that the couples need to ask. The, the hardcore questions is, how many couples are we going to engage with? How many times are we going to meet per week, per month, per day, per hour, per whatever you wanted? Because all of these have a bearing not only on your health, but also your or your physical health, but also your mental health. And yes, couples cheating... <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a different story altogether. But exactly, mm -hmm. if you are using condoms, if you're not using condoms, how do we draw the line? How do we feel about it? What happens if the woman is still fertile or perimenopausal and she's not using a condom and she ends up falling pregnant? How do you deal with that? Because it's not something you go into when, when oh, you want. Oh, geez, Louise, we haven't even dis we haven't even touched on this, and that 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 could be tremendous. One of the recurring themes that 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 we hear the the, the most prevalent um, reason why um, people don't want to use condoms is because some gentlemen, um, perhaps because they overly endowed, um, mm -hmm. struggle maintaining an erection with a condom on. So to those couples and to those gentlemen, do yourself a favor and just Google female condoms. Yeah, let the female do it and you don't have that restriction on your cock mm. um but i can also tell you it's not only about the condom use because if you're going to no. kiss somebody or you're going to engage in oral sex you are still swapping something whatever mm. you, you're yeah. still swapping but the, the the question or the point that i'm trying to make is that it's something very personal that the couple needs to discuss if they decide that condoms is not a priority for what because and this came out in my research a lot of the um participants said to me but why do you want to use a condom if you're anyway having oral sex and kissing which is great but if the couple have not discussed it and this happens to be an issue for either one of them it's going to create major havoc of course yeah Absolutely. Um, I'm just trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to mention about questions that couples need to ask before they engage. But once they've done all these hardcore questions and they've really examined not only their own um, their, their own wants, their own truth, their own personal truth, but also the truth of the relationship a grounding and dynamic only then if they've relatively ticked all the boxes because you can never tick all the boxes but mm. you've relatively ticked most of the boxes then i would advise the coach to say okay why don't you have a look at what it looks like at a swingers club before you just rush in there with your g-string and your nipple caps and all hell breaks <laughs> you down the line but it is I've, I've coached people that have done that that they've they've not considered everything carefully because in their mind it was all this wonderful sex that they were going to have and it was going to save their marriage and life was going to be wonderful and we were coming to utopia and then just down the line, we're finding that these people are, their relationship is traumatized, it's, it's damaged. And to fix that damage, to rebuild the trust, to rebuild 
um, confidence, not only in your relationship, but in yourself again, especially if it's the woman going, but what are you doing? Why? why? You kissed her and you kissed her there. What, what are you thinking? <laughs> you know? one, one of the questions that, that is important and, and could be asked is what church you go to, because obviously bumping into a couple on, on Sunday service that you were shagging the night before is, is quite awkward. Listen, but, I've got a story, but I'm not going to tell it. <laughs> I, I'm, saying, I'm saying that in jest. But uh, where, where I'm going with that is is get to, know, get to know the couple at least a little bit before you invite them over to your house. Um, what, what Debbie and I do, we'll uh, meet for a coffee date, just to face-to-face -to -face first before we take anything further, just to make sure who they are, are they, are they who we think they are, um, and get a little bit of backstory, you know. Mm. Mm. Yes. Where are you? Where are you going to meet your partners? That is one of the questions that's in one of my models explaining communication. Where are we going to meet like-minded people? Are we going to clubs? Are we going to go on a website? Are we going to go by word of mouth? How are we going to meet these people? And how do we initiate the meet process? Or do we just jump in? Do, do we just assume by what we've seen over a WhatsApp or two? Do we Zoom? Do we Skype? How, how do we do this? And a lot of people don't. They just say, oh, okay, you're available and you sound pretty cool on WhatsApp, so I'll see you at the club. And then? Or worse, come or, over to our house. Yes. <laughs> oh, my word. <gasps> it happens, Your, Dr. M, it happens. So let me tell you what happens, right? Um, and obviously, with with a bunch of my previous friends, we were all at at a house party one day, and the one lady found a, a bull. At half past eleven at night, he drove all the way from like Alberton side all the way to the other side of Pretoria North. It's a it's a fuck for, and he was halfway there, and she said, "Sorry, I, like I don't want to see you anymore." Oh he tried so, so meeting people ahead of time and not not setting up your negotiations, not having con have conversations ahead of time, but also not inviting people over when you're in the mood at that moment is yeah. going to be cardinally like cardinally important. Don't just be be wise about shit like that. People really do stupid stuff. When you're horny. When you're horny, that's the problem. It's 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 about and that's that's why these conversations are important. Yes. To have them when you are calm, when you're cool and when you're collected. And sober. And sober. Yes. Have those conversations with your partner. Have those conversations with yourself. Make sure you want to know or you you getting out of this experience what you need. And don't make these decisions. It's, it, that actually stops us from making these decisions when we're horny. Yeah, think with and, the right, the right no, head. And, but that also stops you from thinking with the right head. Because, oh, shit, that's not what my partner and I negotiated. Yes. That's not what our contract says. So even though I'm horny in the minute, and my wife is all the way in Cape Town, like on a business trip. I can't be swinging now because it's not in our negotiations. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And couples need to understand that if they don't do the groundwork, any relationship that they enter into, I mean, you don't meet someone on Kur. Um, I, I believe that's what it's called, kur, um, this dating thing. And then the next minute you move in together and now you're being the priest for a wedding ceremony. And you get to know the person first. You chat with them. You look at their profile picture. You try and see who knows them, um, who do they associate with, all of these things. And the same applies to a consensually non-monogamous relationship. If you are planning to go into that kind of lifestyle, get to know the ins and outs of it. Ask the questions. Do your due diligence. Don't mm. just think of the many orgasms and these crazy parties and all this wonderful stuff which is great for the couples that have sound relationships that is built on trust understanding communication and respect which means that mm. if give the the key word and i'm going um brandy i don't drink but brandy then he <laughs> knows. get the hell out of here she's uncomfortable oh, no. and there is trust I don't like this couple. Something feels off. No problem. Listen, sorry, we just got a call from the alarm company. We'll take a rain check. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? You, uh, you don't? Absolutely. 
Yeah, you don't just dive in and do stupid things. The couples that have emotional maturity, that have done their groundwork, their, this kind of talking, and at length, not just for half an hour, and quickly scribbled something on a piece of paper, and now we're going to go into swinging. Oh, hell no. You need to discuss this over a period of time and come back to it, because every day we change. So do our cells, by the way. So within seven years, our bodies change completely. But over a period of time, because today I feel this way, tomorrow I'm premenstrual, then I'm ovulating, and then I'm having my period, and there's going to be 20 different answers. <laughs> then they just have one answer, but that's fine. But so we need to assess this at all levels over a period of time. And if you still feel inclined to engage in consensual non monogamy, if you're still comfortable, and willing to see your partner with somebody else and you're still happy to exchange sexual encounters with other people, then only should you approach um, a club or something safe. Don't just go to people's houses. Start. And that's the truth because Dr. M said so. And she's got now. <laughs> but I'm just telling you guys that's the truth because Dr. M said so. Um, let's look, it is time to end the show in any case. Um, I think everybody got the gist of where, where it was, where she was going with it. Dr. M, if you can hear us, I'd just like to thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Yes. M. Yes. Because this was, again, extremely informative. And I know when, when her and I discussed this episode, um, we just understood what we wanted out of it. So I think it, it's really, it's really a valuable, valuable tool that people need to know and understand before embarking on, on the swingers journey. So, um, Mr. and Mrs. Tusum, Debbie, James, I mean, I get to see you guys like every week. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. It's going to be a... We're like, also very excited. Very it's excited. going to be a huge... Again, I wanted, to, I wanted to thank you guys again for pleasure. doing this. I'm so excited. It's going to be great. Listen, I'm going to go, go, to, go to bed because Lola hasn't slept. <laughs> I'm really, really tired. Guys, what's coming up this week? This week, it's two extra shows for y'all. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, let me just get my show planning out because I wasn't even prepared for this. I wasn't prepared for fucking a lot of things today. But yeah, we are in the year and the now and my Excel won't open and my phone's taking forever and now it's invoices showing and it's still fucking loading. So I mean, up until it's finished loading and I can finally get my show planning open, then I can tell you guys that on Friday nights we've got Lola's lessons. Listen to that, how that flowed. Okay, I'm really impressed. Yes, guys and girls, you guys can come back and listen to Lola and Lola's lovely wifey Carmen um, with an episode called a subtle start to having some sex. All of you folks that, that struggle and sickle with initiating sex, this one's going to be for you. Come and learn how to convince your partner to get into the sack when you need him. You'll be him or her too. Okay. Let's talk about how to initiate sex because I think there's a lot of people that struggle with it. Common and I are very excited for that episode. Then I can't tell you who it is yet because we're not releasing it until um, Friday. But, oh, gosh, I should. No, I can't. I can't wait. I'm super excited for the co-host. Guys, guys, super excited for the co-host. For Kinky Classes. That is going to be um, on Wednesday evening. Oh, on, on Saturday evening. So Kinky Classes moves to Saturdays, guys. Lola's last hour lectureship is on Friday. Oh, it's on Thursdays. So what the hell is going on with my brain? It's mushed. So Saturday night, we are again airing Kinky Classes. And the first episode is called Cute and Kinky with a K. So we are going to be discussing how to incorporate kink in your relationship. The whole dynamic of Kinky Classes is changing completely. We aren't going to be doing hardcore BDSM, okay? That's not what we're here to do for you guys, because we do classy kink. So that means we're going to teach all you vanilla folk how to add a little bit of kink and a little bit of spice to an intimate relationship. Don't miss it Friday night, fr uh, fr Friday night, 9 o'clock, Saturday night, 9 o'clock. Don't miss these episodes, and it's going to be weekly. 
up until 10 weeks. 10 weeks we end with this season. But then KB hits the airs with Lola in Lifestyle Lectureships on the Poly People. We'll see you guys on Friday night, same time, same place. And up until then. And we'll see Stay you safe, next guys. week, Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. See you soon. Good night. Love the lot of you. Bye. Bye.